this guy here on the on the conference room and i can see then in the app actually the the image and you see here on the bottom um the four the four images that i took over time in that location right and so basically the the the, the nifty thing about this is that whoever has access to that project and downloads the capture app um, actually has instance, you actually see me here taking an image that was earlier this year, has actually instantly access to these images on the project on the mobile device. Okay. And the, the mobile, um, we support uh, iOS and, and Android. Um, and are, are you more, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you asked the question, are you guys more using iOS devices on site or is Android? Android on? Do you guys have some Androids as well? Mostly Androids. Mostly Android. Okay, fantastic. By 95% at least. 95%. And oh, yeah. are, those, are those tablets or do people also have Android phones? Well, I'm talking about the phones right now. Is the phones. Okay, okay. Tablets, there are some, but I, John would be able to tell me more. We do okay. have I, iPads. I've just noticed on the iPad when I'm using it as a viewer, not all functionality like orbiting um, 360 images works with the iPad, but the model overlay point cloud really does work well. Yes, um, there is actually something that we have to fix around that. I think you actually uh, pointed this out to me uh, some time ago. The the orbiting has uh, has some has some on, on the on the real platform. Yes, um, that that is correct. We have to have to get behind that. So. On, on the capture app side, um, that's basically the functionality is really that you um, can can view 2D floor plans. So your default floor plans would show up. So if you go to like your drawings for this project, the default uh, drawings for, for any of these locations would show up. And you can then dive in here, set your pins. And uh, so you, for, for instance, you can set an image position. You say, hey, I want to actually um, set, set an image position here. And the good thing is you could actually tell a, a person remotely where you want pictures to be taken. In other words, you could actually put these pins in here beforehand to indicate to a person on site where he or she should take images. And then obviously connect to a 360 uh, camera. The connection is standard through Wi-Fi off the camera. I don't have one right now here. I gave it away for testing to another product manager. And then once you have the images, um, you can view them for these pins. And then the equivalent on the web, so this is what we're looking at right now is our, our browser-based system. So this is the same, it's the same, um, the same project, same data. So here um, you can also obviously go into this pin and, uh, and 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 view the images. So this is the same image that we just looked at through the uh, through the capture app. What we have here on the web, um, uh, um, uh, one piece of functionality uh, more is the side by side comparison. So I could actually activate this button that I just that I just clicked on, and I can select another picture from a different date, and can now view this side by side, and I can unlock it. And maybe align it better. The, the angle was obviously different here when I when we took these images, and now we're um, viewing on the left hand side an image from uh, from March. Sorry, my European brain always has to adjust. So that's March, and on the right hand side is February. And you could do like a side by side comparison. And uh, if you want to see something bigger, you can obviously like swivel this around a little bit, and then you can also exit this mode and just view one image. Does this make sense so far? Yes. So it's literally, Eric, like what we concluded the last time, it's a very simple manual pin um, uh, dropping on a 2D floor plan and then attaching a 360 image to that, to that location. And then if you take more images, you literally build up a stack of images for, so to speak, your... When it's in the superintendent's hand, just to see functionally how yeah. many clicks they've got just to see how it actually shows on a mobile device. That's a fairly simple for a plan. Ours are bigger. Yes. So, of so those, those, it's going to be harder for them to 
So a little bit of that navigation just to see to make sure it's still going to. You can literally, because you ha- you're, you reconstruct users, you can download the app. You could use it. You can connect it to a 360 camera. Will this work just on their standard phone camera? I know it's not 360, but is it only set up for the 360 camera? It's right now only set up for 360 camera. This is actually something that we're debating very wildly right now. To I guess here's the workflow you can consider. If you want to have, you know, let's say weekly documentation, uh, the person who has a 360 camera would go to these locations that are marked, uh, they would start taking the pictures. So you have that weekly documentation readily available to you. And then as people go, when there's some issue that needs to be documented, once we implement the um, phone picture taking capability, they can supplement that picture right. to the rest of the data that they have in the system. So from a workflow perspective, we can, we can support you on that. Let me... Um, Quickly show you a few examples. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? On top yeah, says National. Yeah, we see your planning. So this is uh, an active Scanska project where um, they use our system for video two-point cloud, also for intentional photo taking purposes. So I'm on level eight of this 11-story uh, building, and you can see there are locations that are marked for picture taking capability, and I'm going to dive into one of them. And you'd be able to see that there's a Scanscope who was using the app, was holding the camera in his hand, and he's taking a picture here. On this location, there are three photographs that are taken. So this is 26th of June. We have the 2nd and also the 17th. So what I'll do is I'll do split screen. And on the left side, I say, I really want to see my 17th. And I want to go ahead and unlock these two. And once I'm in the corridor view, I'm going to go ahead and lock them. Now, if I'm in the coordination meeting and I'm going one location at a time, I want to discuss progress, safety, quality, whatever it's been going on. In this location, I'll go to this view and I'll start the conversation. So I see some new cable trays are installed, cables are being pulled here, there's a new trash can over here. So there's changes, right? And those changes are you know, easily seen side by side per location, per view. And I can even further go back in time and say, you know, show me what we had on the second. And this is how that location looks like on the second. So you can actually see they didn't even have the flooring back then. The beauty is that you can sort of think about this as time lapse, right? That gives you this entire view uh, from any location that you desire over time. And it's as simple as you send someone and they take the picture in that location. So this was a location that clicked on. Now, now let me let me actually let me actually ask uh, interrupt real quick, Mani, if if I may. Um, now, obviously, with a 360, you can, you know, swirl around. I, I always refer to the owl, right? You can go 360. Um, now, if we do the directional picture, would you want to see then on your floor plan also that the direction in which somebody took a picture with the phone? Yeah, you always want to see which direction you're pointing, what column line you're on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. All right, so I'll pull up my phone. Now I'm doing a live demo on my phone, and I'm going to go to the Capture app so you can actually see the experience. Now when I log in, it shows me a list of all projects I have on my phone, and I am looking at this Scanska project, so I'm going to pull that up. There's a total of 13 different locations, and the location that we were looking at together was level one. So I'm scrolling down. I'm clicking on level one. And now I see the same experience as I was seeing before. And this is a really large 2D drawing. You see, I'm zooming in right, right over here. And I say, right over here, take me to those three images that I have. I'm opening that up. This is the same image that we were looking at before. I have to rotate myself all the way to the other direction. There you go. So um, the use case it would be the polling for the viewer. If you're on site, and let's say you had some uh, mechanical, electrical components that are not embedded into the wall, and you're performing an inspection, you really want to see where, what location exactly was embedded at. So what you do is you stand in front of the wall, you pull up the image in this location, and you click on that icon in the top right corner, and you see live, I don't know if you can actually see me, myself, on a video camera here, but as I'm moving my phone left and right, the view is automatically changing for me. So if I'm looking up, you can immediately see that. So this is really helpful for superintendents because in the field, you can actually see the reality in front of your eyes and contrast it against an image that was taken from that location some time ago. We're gonna go back there. So basically that time-lapse capability is also provided on the phone. Um, you can easily go back and forth um, and you can see the rest of the data that I have here. 
And this is right now from a format perspective. Um, Mani, what phone are you using? Are you using a 10 or something? Um, I am using an iPhone 10. That's correct. An iPhone 10, okay. Mine is iPhone 10. So here you see obviously the tiling is different and my, my iPad, obviously on an iPad you have a little bit more space, but I think most of us also in testing, we use, we use a phone. Maybe it's another job. Uh, this is a QA job and these guys are also using our app for taking pictures. And you know, they used to do high frequency video capture, but now um, they're actually at the um, commissioning phase almost. And now the usage of the uh, app has significantly grown because they go to different locations and they simply take pictures. Now, I also want to show you one more workflow. Imagine that, you know, Eric wants to see pictures taken on DHAM project today. So what he can do is either through um, the app or phone here, he can go into the drawing in any location here and click and say, I really want my guys to go into this location and take another image. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. Uh, I'm not going to do it because this is a live project. So let me actually right. log out and go to one other project. I I can delete it from the Scanska project. Not a problem. I'll do that on that door. Okay, so I'll go here and I say I want new image to be taken from this bathroom. So I'll place the image one more here and I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and save them. Now you see there are two new pins that are added, and if I click no, on, yeah, yeah, okay. If, if your guy goes in the field and takes images, this blue icon changes to green. Right. So you know exactly what the location has been captured for you on that day. So this is basically a combination of the mobile app and the web app that would show you the same level of information. One more thing on the viewer. So let me go back on the viewer. Now you may say, well, we now have images in different locations. Can I see when we've had images for this location. So if you notice I'm on level eight, down here, some of my other locations are sort of um, grayed out. And the ones that stand out to you are those dates that in this location we had images captured. But for example, this one is gray out, but I know probably for another location, we've had some images captured on that day too. So again, you basically can create a timeline for each location or create um, many locations for which you have images on a given date. <coughs> and again, it's really simple. All there is to it is um, taking images for different days. And if you supplement it with video, voila, you get both. So you get a video capture with the frames at the same time as the individual uh, pictures that take. And you can also turn it then in the interface, you can turn it on. You can say, hey, I only want to see my video, my video locations or my 360 okay. image pins. You can turn this on and off. One, what, one question I have since money, since you're now here in the image view, as you can see in the middle again is the button that allows you to then do a split screen and compare. This is a functionality that is available on the web only. Um, what is your your reaction to, um, to to the fact that it's only available on the web? Something that would be very useful on the mobile device as well. Well, when you say the web, wouldn't it work on, on the, an iPad? Yeah, iPad hooked to Wi-Fi. Would that work? Yeah. That would work, yes. Yeah, that's I think fine, that would man. be enough. I, I think trying to put this on a, a small phone might be difficult. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It would only work comfortably if you have it and obviously horizontal, if you hold it horizontal, it's a small, it's a small screen on the phone. I was just curious. If there would be a value, if it would be a field supervisor wanted to go back in time and compare, like you're looking mm -hmm. at that panel there and see if the mm -hmm. diagrams are done right, or maybe, maybe when it got screwed up. Uh, I don't know. I think you'd go back on a larger screen in the trailer and do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or an iPad out in the field, Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm going to show you one more demo. Um, I know some of your projects, this capability may also apply. Um, I remember there was one project where you wanted to do some quick inspection and there wasn't any 2D drawing necessarily available at the time. So what you can do is you can send your team, they can videotape it, they can generate a point cloud. And then later on, if you had a need for someone to go back and take additional photos, you can mark up our ortho photos. So, Army Corps of Engineers in Champaign is actually trying that out with us right now. So what they've done is they've actually used the video capture and there are ortho photos generated using our system. Do you see the ortho photos I'm zooming in here? 
the ones that we generated from videos. And you see, now I have the ability to create my own markups. So what you can do is you can send someone to a complete video capture and use that map, the floor plan, as a basis of pinning future images against that. So this would also be another capability in case if you didn't have any 2D drawing to start with. So what you can do is you can first map it out with a video. And then Significant reset and think about what you just said. So if you're, so your guy's drafting and he hasn't had a chance to even generate Revit or a CAD file, right. you could go out there and generate this and, and this potentially could be scalable and used as an underlay to draft off of or no? Yes, yes, no. exactly, yep. We actually do have a project in Wisconsin that are using our system exactly for that purpose. Yeah. Yes. Um, in, you need to verify dimensions to, to start trusting. Yeah. Here's an example of outdoors for you, John. You can see there's a parking lot here, and this is where the building was located at. So they essentially walked around a videotape, a floor plan, and now they're pinning images against Well, them. and Monty, it doesn't have to be heavy surveying use. If you shoot your targets and you've got a point shoot laser and you can measure from target to column, or column to column, you, that, that's all you need and you can check in right away. Rest assured that, you know, for small type of measurement, and by small, I'm referring to things that would be in order of, let's say, tens of uh, yards, um, you would be able to get into sub-inch accuracy really easily. And by that, I mean even, uh, you know, millimeters. But the question is for a large job site where you have hundreds of yards, would it drift over distance? Um, that's where we need to definitely demonstrate that capability to you. Uh, but if you, you know, have spaces that are, let's say, you know, or even up to two, 200,000 square feet, you can, you can say on average, you should be expecting around half an inch. But just keep something in mind. This app also works when you do not have internet connection. That's another beautiful aspect. Anything that you've downloaded on your phone would be left on the phone. So you can always get back to it and, and use that. You see, and so I'll open up the first floor and let's say, you tell me where you want me to pin images. You say, maybe I want to have a guy go out and do a picture taken for me from here. So, so, so when, I, when I when I put that pin in or where I'm at, how do I, if I go out there to take that picture, how do I know I'm standing in the right place? Um, yeah, it's, it's a good question, uh, Eric. So this is approximate, right? As long as, you know, basically when you go to that location, you roughly try to position yourself there and you click on it and you take the image. It doesn't need to be perfect. So, so it's by the landmarks of the drawing that I'm going to yeah, position that's myself. Right. Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, outdoors is probably a little bit more challenging than, of right. course, the indoors. Yeah, that's absolutely. okay. It's the repeatability that I was wondering about because you opened up with your earlier, where when we were first talking last week, um, which still can be a use for it of, of randomly going around taking pictures of interest mm -hmm. versus actually taking them from very close to the same location on a regular consistent basis for historical and comparative. Because yes. um, I like what you're showing and the power of then being able to go back uh, because as people use it, they get more familiar and they're on the same thing. So that's, you know, the better and I, so I think in some of these cases, if we had the path, we just put a piece of orange tape on the floor or whatever, right? So that they yeah. know yeah. It's with a Sharpie marker, this is, yeah. this is so, okay. and I know it doesn't have to be exact, but. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I've done a lot of these 360 captures in my life in the past few years. And oftentimes you also then find, you know, you go around for the first time and the floor is, you know, it's perfect. You know exactly where you are. A right. week later, you come in and all of a sudden somebody put like, you know, a drywall exactly where you took. Then, you know, I mean, you're probably then a few feet off, but right. since it's 360, it's still significant and yeah. um, it, it, it shows the overall picture literally. Yeah, it's, it's to get it close. So yes. I, can see the, I can see the power in the comparisons and um, particularly if, you know, the problem areas and you're trying to refer to it in a coordination meeting and, Somebody says, what's going on there? And you can look back and say, well, look, you know. So, yeah, I can see a lot of power in this and with the ease of use. And, Eric, you had a question about, you know, the size of the drawing. So these are your Microsoft project, which, you know, are sizable. Yes. You can see how I'm, you know, bringing them on board. So basically, if you have guys in the field, they can also use the app to review the 2D drawing as much as they're taking pictures. Sure. I didn't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and download these four drawings so the only catch is these drawings needs to be mapped uh with a location name so we know which location they belong to there you go so you got four oh, drawings you go. and your utilities it's 
Well, also, also think, John, about although it's somebody might not initially think of this as a dashboard, but think about for a customer that we want to have a kind of a fully interactive dashboard of, of progress on the job. And they, this is pretty easy for somebody without any technical knowledge at all right. to go in and say, oh, they, they're they going to know the, the layout of the plant and then yeah. be able to, you know, if they want an exterior photo or an interior and just instead of having to go into a schedule and, you know, all those clicks we've got and we've got PDF right. documents we're trying to, and we're trying to make it real time, this could be on a weekly basis where they're able yeah. to go in, you know, all the problems you've had with uploading photos and, Labeling them and organizing yeah. them, it's all done. Edward, sure. yeah, you know, I like it. I, I especially like your idea with the with the owners. I mean, you could easily tell them, "Hey, download the app. We take every week, like you know, pictures right. at certain locations." And um, and it's it's it's. I think it's fairly easy because they really just have to download the app. If they have a login to reconstruct, they right. download their project. They see the plans and off they go. Right. Um, so Sorry, Mike, I think I interrupted you. No, I just want. To... Yes, it's 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 re it's real time within a week. If somebody wants to say, "What's the progress in this particular room or from this particular view?" and it's visual, they're not having to look. They look no. at a schedule. They can't. It doesn't tell them what what the progress is, right? Yeah. It's a bar. Yeah. Yeah. And here's an idea for you. You just you just gave me you gave me a little spark. Um, you you could even ha if you do have a PDF based dashboard, let's say your project on a sheet, so to speak, you could actually upload that as a drawing, give it a location, call it dashboard, and um, update that every week, and they could see that here. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is you know right now it's really a set of bare minimum features in the app. And partly that's intentional. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we can tap into the ease of use of this. Simple, yes. right? So just in images. Yes. And so, you know, again, going back to that early conversation we had about the journey, I think, you know, one of the things that we wanted to give you feedback on is, is this really go going to be the good starting point? Because, you know, if we add a little bit more to it, if people are not ready, this is going to overwhelm them, right? But if it's really, really simple, let's say for the next six months, everyone will be able to use this. And as they use, they come with all these kind of ideas that, oh, I really wanted to start, you know, annotating this. I want to be color coding it. I want to get the dashboard. We will take them through this journey of the next step of what they will be able to achieve with this type of visual. Um, oh, I think you're at the right starting point. Then a question I have to ask for John, would the, and I, th I think there's an easy answer. How much more time would it take our normal person that's assigned to do our, we're using reconstruct and we're doing mm -hmm. our normal 360 capture. How much extra effort would he have to stand? You know, and let's say we have, um, I, I don't know, like that floor plan, that floor plan, a floor plan might have, uh, 30, 40, you know, points of taking one for this. Is that a separate? But if you really want to have quick capture so you can use it for, I don't know, a coordination meeting that's coming up tomorrow morning, this capability of taking pictures is ideal because it would also reduce the time that they have to spend walking around even videotaping. And then every day I want my guy to spend a fraction of that time, just walk around and just take some images from me. Oh, yeah. Well, you've answered it, but it's two, and it's okay. It's two yeah, separate yeah. walks. Yeah, I, I think, think it could be two separate walks. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. think it needs to be as well. Sure. And that image would, would, would have this label time underground fire protection. Well, if it's at that location, it doesn't necessarily have to lay, have a label on it. Does it John? If the picture's there, isn't it going to show what's there? Yeah, it shows it there. But I think what Monty's saying is to be able to search it, you got to have a tag, right? Isn't that? Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. So... That's what I'm after. Is the image basically would we tag the image? But it's if you're if we're, if they're trying, and we are together trying to keep this simple. Yeah. It's not yeah. simple to figure out how the all these different images are going to be tagged. Yeah. Because because then everybody has a different idea how to do it. That's so true. the simple part is, what's a simple way? If if somebody wants to 
tag or bring special emphasis to a photo versus we know where it's at. We know right now, you know, when it was taken and where it was taken. Yeah. Let's say right. we have a weekly basis, but we're adding these extra photos in. To me, there's, it's what's the follow-up action to that? Yes, but I can give you a slightly different example, maybe, Eric. I, I think I also understand what John is referring to. Imagine that you had some, you know, embedments that somebody placed into your rebar cage, right? And you, you know, have been doing image capture in that location for months. Now, six months from now, you come back and you know roughly where that location is, but you really want to find at what date that embedment was placed in. So you can actually find that picture, right? So if you want to ha go back six months for weekly pictures and find that picture, you have to spend a few seconds or a minute on finding that picture. Maybe if you search, type in, you know, I'm looking for that embedment with a location name, then you can find it. So there are cases where finding that as a function of time can also be helpful. Oh, I completely agree. But in a simple version, I'm talking about a simple version that okay. people are pinning it and not going through four or five different cells and trying to pick a tag and creating custom tags. And yeah, I, oh, I, yeah, in full disclosure, I built one of these apps before with these categorizations. And that was, I think the toughest part in the beginning, everybody is saying, Oh, this is cool. We have like five, six categories. And then in the field, yes. this goes through the roof with like 125 and it's yes. basically rendered completely useless. 